Remember we said respiratory viruses can infect the upper or lower respiratory tract? Well, now we're going to talk about one that likes to infect the lower respiratory tract, where it causes bronchiolitis and pneumonia. And remember that these, unlike URIs, can kill. This virus is called respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. RSV almost always affects infants less than a year old. It causes more than 80% of lower respiratory tract infections in this group. And by their second birthday, almost all children will have been infected by RSV. Occasionally, adults can develop symptomatic RSV infections, but it's usually mild and isolated to the upper respiratory tract. So what are the symptoms? Well, since it starts in the upper respiratory tract, initially you might see rhinorrhea, or runny nose, congestion, and sneezing. And then over one to three days, it spreads to the lower airways, reaching the terminal bronchioles where it causes cough. And the problems arise when the bronchioles become swollen and plugged with mucus. And at that point, it gets harder and harder to move air through the bronchioles. So then what you might see is tachypnea, which means fast breathing because the infant is trying to get more air into the alveoli through that resistance. You'll see retractions, which refers to the inward movement of the chest wall. That's a reflection of the high negative pressures that you're trying to use in order to inflate your lungs. And finally, if it gets really bad, you might see low blood oxygen levels or hypoxemia. Now the virus can actually get past the terminal bronchioles into the alveoli and infect the alveoli, and that's what we call pneumonia. In that case, you can also see tachypnea and low oxygen levels. And in practice, it's pretty difficult to distinguish between bronchiolitis and pneumonia with RSV. Overall, the infection is typically most severe in infants younger than six months, and up to 20% of these might develop apnea, which is temporary cessation of breathing that usually occurs early in the course of RSV. Kids in this age group also might not present with classical symptoms of RSV infection, so don't forget to think about RSV if young infants present with lethargy, poor feeding, fever, or even an ear infection during RSV season. Other patients susceptible to severe disease are premature infants, infants and toddlers with congenital heart disease and chronic lung disease, immunosuppressed patients, and the elderly.